The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Money Masters. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, the Money Masters. Good day from TFNN. Welcome to the July 3rd Independence Day edition of today's Money Masters show. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, the daily newsletter service that is the intelligence for creating financial freedom. Hope everyone's off to a great start today. Let's make sure that we make this a safe and happy 4th of July celebration out there. Now, let's go take a look at one of our tools that helps us to lead an inspired life. You know, in recognition of July 4th, uh, it's a tool I shared during the uh, first hour out here. It's what I call the declaring of our independence out here. So for those of you that listen in the first hour, you get to hear it again in the second hour, and it's this. Our 4th of July celebration, folks, it's rooted in history. It is absolutely recorded that shortly after the Declaration of Independence was signed in Philadelphia, celebrations took place throughout the land, and the former colonists were just starting to call themselves Americans. How good must that have felt, folks? You, you see, you and I, we celebrate the 4th of July with fireworks, with picnics, fun festivities, parties, or, you know, barbecue, the grill's going to be a little bit more expensive to do that, but imagine what it must have been like in Independence Hall when those 56 men came together to sign that Declaration of Independence. We've got to realize that these men, they pledged their lives, their fortunes, their honor, their sacred honor. Each man knew the penalty. The penalty. High treason, folks, against the uh, crown. Benjamin Franklin, he said, hey, we must all hang together or assuredly we will all hang separately. And John Hancock, he wrote a signature so large that King George could see it without his spectacles. Yes, these were brave men, and they stayed brave throughout all of the bloodshed in those coming years. Their courage formed a nation built on a universal claim of human dignity, on the proposition that every man, woman, and child has the right to a future of freedom. Independence Day, it's about these words, in my opinion. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And the fact is, throughout history, all of our leaders, they've always spoken about the national unity out there and that they've warned that the real obstacle to moving the boundaries of freedom forward come from within. And I believe that to be true. In fact, it's been true ever since the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Most people don't know this, but two of our greatest founding fathers, John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, who clearly worked so closely together in Philly for independence, they parted ways after signing the Declaration. Not immediately, but you see, once you form a government, what occurs is what's called partisan politics. And partisan politics, they get in the way. And after a bitter and divisive campaign back in the 1800s, Jefferson defeated Adams, and it was Adams that slipped away just slightly before the inauguration. He slipped away to Boston. He was disappointed. He was brokenhearted, and he was certainly bitter. You see, politics, they are divisive, but here is what I know, and that's this, and this is the important thing about the 4th of July, and that's that the things that unite us, the things that unite you and I, America's past, of which we should be so proud, our hopes and our aspirations for a future of a great country, these things, folks, they far outweigh what little divides us. So this weekend, it's a time to remember that we are one nation under God. We are one nation indivisible, and regardless of politics, we're all Americans, and as Americans, we pledge ourselves to each other and to the cause of freedom, not just ours, but freedom across the world. So from all of us here at Tiger Financial News Network, we wish you and your family a happy and safe 4th of July holiday out there. Be careful as you're lighting off those fireworks. It is Independence Day. This is TFNN. I'm Steve Rhodes, and welcome to the show. Right now we've got the uh, Dow. She's trading above 17,000 out of the 17,049 17, level, up 72 points right now. S&P up 7 points at 1982. NASDAQ up 17, train out at 44.71. Russell 2000 up 5 points at 12.04. NDX 100 up 13 points. New York Stock Exchange up uh, 35. Let me see what uh, we've got here as far as net advancing issues. Uh, man, it does not look good. There are some covers, uh, covers. There are some troubles in paradise out here. You've got 136 net advancing issues out there. 
not necessarily what you want to see as part of the uh, celebration. So there are some duds. There are some firework duds. And they look like they're inside the New York Stock Exchange. Gold right now is trading back 11 bucks, well off its session lows thus far. Silver's down 15 pennies, trading out at 21.15. Light sweet crude off about 70 cents, trading out at 103.79. Our call number is 877-927-6648. Feel free to give me a call. Happy to take a look at uh, your stock chart. Let's uh, start off by taking a look at the uh, ETF structures inside of the uh, four major uh, indexes out here. Let's go take a look at the uh, Qs. Let's go take a look at the QQQ. Full bullish mode out here for sure. Uh, Qs likely headed up to their 1.618 expansion. That expansion is coming off of the swing point high from March the 7th. Uh, That price level is uh, 91.36. You go from that high down to the low on April 15th, out at 83.28. The 1.618 expansion will take us, and it just acts like a little magnet out there, $96.35, your 95.39. Looks like that's what it has in store for us out there. If we take a look at the IW, the Russell 2000 up 53 cents right now, up about four tenths of a uh, percent out here. Russell 2000 trying to get above resistance. That resistance is the 120.58 mark. Now, what's interesting about that swing point? And it was a swing point high. So here's a great example uh, from a technical standpoint of what it is that you look for on a stock chart. The IWM, Russell 2000, oftentimes you hear us talk about high-volume lows. Many times you see high-volume lows more often than you see high-volume highs. And when you see them, you most certainly want to notate them. Here's a high-volume high inside the Russell 2000 place on March 4th. Volume up there was 112 million shares. Price made a move all the way back down to the swing point low from February 5th. Uh, that uh, made it all the way down there on the trading session of May 15th. Formed a little hammer candle down there. Made a 100% move of a move. And then what did it do? It had its sights set on that high volume high. Now, 112 million shares on that trading session. When our first fireworks display went off in the market, that was a couple trading sessions ago. That was on July 1st out here. What the Russell 2000 did was it tested that high. It failed on price and volume. So it failed on price and volume. We've got to watch the IWM like a hawk out here. What do I mean failed on price and volume? I mean it got over the swing point of 120.58, closed back below it, did that on lighter volume, the 65 million shares versus the 34 million shares. Now what the IWM has not done, that's why it still remains really bullish out here, is it hasn't completely rejected the swing point. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that it's not traded and closed below. Forget about the trading. It has not closed below the low of that trading session from March 4th. That low, and that's the number you want to be watching, is 118.18. So there's really two numbers to pay attention to inside the Russell 2000. 118.18. At 120.58, a close above 120.58 offers higher price out there. Where, you say? You know, just like we took a look at inside of the queues, I would do the same thing here. I would take a look at an expansion pattern, but I really think it's probably the uh, queues. I should take that back. It's probably the cues that we really get our signal from as well. So we've got to keep one eye on the IWM, another eye on the uh, QQQ. But the cues, if they can break above 120.58, they offer the promise of a price move up to 124.15. Let's go take a look at the uh, spies and the diamonds. Let's go ahead and wrap this up out here. Uh, the spy right now trading out at 197.93. That's up 69 pennies up here, up three and a half. Uh, not three and a half, up point three percent out here, up above its swing point. What is the uh, spy trying to do? Let's take a look at A to B equals C D. The one that begins off of the February fifth low out here. That A point, uh, the low is at one seventy three seventy one. Our B point is going to be the high that came in on April fourth. The retracement down into the April eleventh area. You can see that the spies now are above the one to one A to B equals C D. That's what it hit on the trading session of July first. That's what it hit yesterday. Today just slightly above it. If it can close above that level, 197, the SPY says it would like to reach the next area, and that is at 201.65. It's 1 to 1.272. A to B equals CD to the upside. If we go take a look at the diamonds, the Dow Diamonds, having a big party out here. Did you get your RSVP? It's trading above 17,000. The diamonds trade out at 170.08. Today, making a move inside the diamonds above their resistance level. 
level of their unfair high of their market profile, which is at 169.42. You close above that today, 169.42. That offers the promise of higher price until we see otherwise. Where do the diamonds want to uh, trade to? Well, if we take a look at that lightning bolt pattern, that A to B equals C, your A point's going to be the February 5th high. Your B point's going to be or the February 5th low. Your B point, the April 4th high. And your C point, that retracement down into April 11th. 1 to 1A to B equals C D says 17,200 ish inside the Dow. It says 172.82 would be the magic number where the Dow diamonds look like they will want to uh, trade up to until we see the bears rush in. And that means we got to pay attention to the New York Stock Exchange. Most certainly we want to do that. If we go take a look at the uh, New York Stock Exchange out here, I mentioned uh, right now the uh, market breadth was not very good. A lot of time left in the trading. Well, when I say a lot of time, what I really mean by that is less than three hours because the uh, cash markets will close at 1 o'clock today. But let's go take a look at the uh, NYSE. Let's go see what it is uh, doing. Let's go break this apart out here. New York Stock Exchange still in bullish mode today. That changes if we were to see net declining issues of 69 or more. Can't uh, tell you whether that's going to happen or not. I just know what it is that we should be looking for. Where does the New York Stock Exchange want to uh, travel to? Well, that's a, a really, really, really good question out here. There is a potential, I do say potential, three drive to a top. It looks like it. And a three drive to a top pattern is, let's take a look at the uh, cycles here. It's where you have a equivalent, uh, which, it's where you have an, uh, an equivalent number of days between your first and second uh, drive out here. Interestingly enough, that's July 3rd. Huh. How about that? I was just done, uh, hadn't paid attention to that. But I guess I said we ought to go pay attention to the New York Stock Exchange. Now, let's go ahead and let's investigate this further. So drive one out here is going to be the uh, move, the, Ju- the June 9th high. That high inside the NYSE was 10,941.86. The next drive, the next higher high before it starts to move lower out here, that took place on the June 20th. That high was at 11,023. Total number of trading sessions, nine. Add nine more trading sessions to that. Guess what you get? July 3rd. Now, a real three drive to a top pattern has uh, typically has, has beautiful, so you don't like to force the time out here, has beautiful Fibonacci expansion. So let's go take a look at what those expansions, 1.272, 1.618, it doesn't have to, but boy, those are the textbook uh, kind. So let's go searching for a textbook kind of three drive to a top pattern out here. Oh, why did it grab that, uh, grab the wrong, uh, grab the wrong, uh, grab the wrong swing point, I believe. Let's see, well, maybe it didn't. 11.025 on June 24th versus 11.023. Yeah, I'm going to still stick with the 11.023 out here. So you can see the first swing point, basically about a 1.618 area. 1.618 swing point here today would take us into a much higher price, take us into about 11, 11, 11 one, one. One four eleven thousand one fourteen eleven thousand one fifteen eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Hey, like any pattern out there, it needs to be confirmed with a bearish reversal signal. That is not in the cards here, not as of yet. We'll be right back, folks. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different future contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. 
This Red Lake Greenlight Market Profile System dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now, you can receive a free two-week trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the signal box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now is the perfect time to get a full month-long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 58 points above that 17,000 mark, trading out at 17,034. Uh, S&Ps are up five. They're trading at 1979. Let's go out to, uh, speaking of the Declaration of Independence, let's go out to uh, Philadelphia to our man, uh, John. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Uh, how, are the, uh, how are the 4th of July celebrations in Philly? Uh, Steve, how about we meet for a cocktail in front of Independence Mall Take a gander at the Liberty Bell. Oh, that would be a great thing. That would be. A, we, we're we're going to put that on our calendar. We're going to do that. Uh, I will actually tell. I will invite all your listeners to come to Philadelphia at some point. Uh, of course, Fourth of July weekend in Philadelphia is terrific on Independence Mall. Yes. And Philadelphia has got one beautiful art museum, the Philadelphia Art Museum, right on the banks of the Schuylkill River, overlooking all sorts of. Uh, boat houses where uh, uh, ah, crew, right. crew teams uh, crew teams house all their boats, and there are just fabulous fireworks displays right over the art museum every year. It is uh, it's really uh, it's it's just terrific. That's good. Now, are the uh, this uh, this hurricane that's moving up the uh, coast is that uh, going to be impacting your guys' weather at all on the fourth, or will it have blown out by that time, or maybe not even impact you at all because of because uh, of where you're looking. Uh, yeah, I think I think that will uh, bring some rains Friday evening, so it uh, it may in fact uh, make it kind of soggy. Mm hmm. 
Well, you know, have a uh, have a great uh, holiday uh, out there, and uh, you know, all the, the little time off is always good for uh, each of us. I know my batteries can uh, can use it; they're going to use it. You wanted to take a look at uh, silver, I believe, or one of the things you wanted to look at was was silver. Tell me what what you're looking at, or how I can assist you in that Steve, endeavor. I, yes, thanks very much, Steve. I'd like to share with you and your listeners an observation I have on silver. Uh, I suspect it's, well, in my mind, it is actionable, and I wanted to then ask you a question about TLT, the bonds. But, okay. But the silver first, I wanted to, and I posted this in the Tiger's Den, I wanted to share the following observation. Back on June 19th, the day after the last Federal Reserve um, uh, meeting, yes, silver surged uh, at least for two days. It uh, rallied over $20.60 per ounce. In doing that, it did two things. Uh, on the weekly chart, there is a very obvious pivot point at 2060, uh, meaning a pivot point meaning many times in the past year, 18 months, there have been highs at that price and mm-hmm. lows at that price. Mm-hmm. Well, we, we powered over that. Number two, in doing so, in moving over that pivot, a downtrend line that had been in force since the peak back in 2011, I believe that was about May 1st, up at $49.80 an ounce. Right. A downtrend line that connected four or five separate peaks yes. uh, was violated, and we're now trading above. Now, uh, coming in today, we're at twenty twenty one dollars twenty cents. It appears just quietly lower. That masks some uh, good action early at eight thirty in reaction to the jobs data. Yes, and frankly, I saw that as being significant. What happened was this, Steve: uh, silver was trailing off four or five six a.m. And then in reaction to that data, there was a flurry of selling that went down to precisely $20.80. And there have been a series of lows in the past 10 trading days at $20.80. We went there, we tagged it, we rejected it, we've come back up. That formation of testing those multiple lows at 2080 and above that $20.60 mark, which, as I uh, shared with you, have reason to believe that's significant. Uh, to me, I would uh, just share that silver has now the technical setup to launch higher in very volatile fashion. That's not a guarantee that that will happen, but it's as, as if a new floor has been established and uh, uh, just uh, for full disclosure, I'm long from lower levels, and uh, uh, that formation may in fact be significant. So I wanted to share that with you. Yeah, you know, and if you take a look at that, if we take a look at the weekly chart, folks, so if you uh, watch this on Tiger TV, you can see the trend line. Oh, hey, John, can you uh, hang on through this next breakout here? I sure can, Steve. Absolutely. We'll go back with John in uh, Philly, little little 4th of July celebration out here. But you can see that trend line that John was talking about, the one that takes us all the way back to the highs in April of 2011, and it clearly was broken with conviction that weekend of June 20th. We'll be right back, folks. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. 
If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mob in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks, to the July 4th edition of the Money Masters Show. Uh, I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and uh, we've got the Dow's up 65 points right now. That's cleared the 17,000 mark. She's trading out at 17,042. We're on the line with John from Philadelphia. We've been taking a look at uh, silver out here. John pointed out that uh, silver broke through its uh, descending trend line. The chart I put up on my screen here right now is a uh, so the Rhodes Momentum Indicator charts out here, one of the tools, and what it uh, shows, folks, on the week weekly chart is the upper portion of the uh, chart in the light blue area blue skies ahead meaning it is as bullish as you can get so it had a nice little uh, bullish uh, crossover of uh, two moving averages it did that the uh, two weeks ago so that was bullish you can see on the daily chart it's above its 200 period exponential moving average uh, john was talking about the move lower here this morning and after the uh, jobs numbers uh, the uh, 200 day exponential moving average is at twenty dollars and 76 cents the actual low that we saw this morning was twenty dollars and 82 cents so uh, so long as silver stays above the 200 day exponential moving average we can see it's been tested a few times out there i am in concurrence with uh, john out there that it wants higher price not necessarily lower price out there um so, yeah, uh, you know, and if we take a look at the uh, market profiles also, uh, John, I know you follow those 
from silver from a standpoint. Uh, the high that it's trying to get above is that point of control, that real large area of congestion. So you mentioned uh, you mentioned to the bottom end where silver, I think it was around $20 and uh, 60 or 20 80 uh, was the uh, number that you had as a pivot point, as a little point of control and congestion area. Silver needs to get above $21.26 out there, and that's acting as just kind of an intermediate resistance zone. But once it clears that, it should uh, head up to about $22.22 out there. So that's what the charts are suggesting to uh, me. Anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no, no, uh, Steve, uh, thank you for sharing that uh John Logan's work on the <clears throat> the uh, TAS signal box uh, ranges on that weekly chart. I find that helpful. Interestingly, that uh, top of the box uh, in John Logan's uh, vocabulary is 2220. Yes. So happens to be the peak from February, so I'll keep that in mind. Exactly. Steve, I also wanted to um, change subjects and, and uh, ask you a question about interest rates and the U.S. bond markets. Steve, I have been successfully trading uh, the long bond and long bond futures and the TLT from the short side since after May 29th when on Larry Pesavento's show he identified the 138 area as being the, the area of a potential turning point top. Uh, we've fallen off and there was a, a, a sell-off in bonds and a spike low today in reaction to that jobs data. I wanted to ask you if, in your work, you see anything definitive right at this moment in time in the bond markets. Uh, because from my perspective, one can, I, can, I can make the case for an important top having occurred back uh, last week of May. On the other hand, today's spike low, I could also make the case for that being a tradable bottom and hence, right here, right now, I'm a little bit on the fence, wanted to see if anything definitive shows up in your work on that market, please. Yeah, let's, so let's take a look at a couple. Let's take a look at a couple different uh, areas. Let's uh, let's first go back to a. Uh, let's go back and take a look at the daily chart. Let's use uh, the TAS signal box uh, numbers. Let's see what pops up on the screen. So, from a daily perspective, out here does suggest that a uh, top, at least a short term top, was put in. I don't know why that cursor is not uh, working here right now. Darn it. Um, looks like around the uh, June. Mm, I don't know why it's stuck. Sorry about that. Uh, looks like it's right around May the uh, 29th. I'll have to switch system. Here's what, here's what I know on the daily chart. If we take a look at market profiles, 136.16 is the uh, unfair low. Price is trading below that. So that's a, a signal that uh, being short is the uh, better move than being long at the uh, moment. But if we trade and we switch over to a little longer time frame, the weekly chart out here, what we're going to find, I believe, is that the uh, weekly chart has just been moving in a consolidation range and the real support level so if you're short where you really ought to be looking for a significant support area would be that 133.08 uh, uh, level out there and that's what the weekly chart is saying now the weekly chart also is a 137.06 is resistance out here so the question is is this just a consolidation trading in between that uh, box level and that's what uh, that's what the uh, TAS signal box charts show if I take a look at the uh, roads momentum trading strategy out here what uh, so far what this morning spike low did was it created it's in the reason so what's interesting and what i find interesting is that you're you're on the fence and that's really what this chart here is also suggesting uh when it forms this uh, this first push down uh what it's doing it's pushing momentum down into a, a threshold level that uh is where the rubber band usually will stretch from and the question is is this going to be a change in trend so if the session closed right here right now I, too, would still be on the fence. If you were not in a position, I would say the answer as to whether this morning's low was going to be a low or not would then be a close above today's high. And that's at 135.16 out here. And so a close above that would say that presented what today presented was a buying opportunity. Likewise, come... Uh, uh, come the next several uh, trading sessions, if you were to see a close below today's low out here, 
uh, that would signal that this wants a lower price out there. And that's, how, that's what this chart here is suggesting to me. And that's taking a look at the current September contract for the 30-year Treasury out there. Um, that's, that's, you know, that's what those charts say. If I take a look even at a continuous contract out here, and I don't really, you know, from a trading standpoint, you're not really looking at the continuous contract, are you, for your trading uh, decisions? I, yes. No, I am not. Yeah, yeah. So let's uh, we'll we'll just we'll just skip that uh, altogether since since you're really not looking at that. So those are the levels that the charts are suggesting to me that we ought to uh, take a look at. Uh, close above today's high suggests that uh, the move here this morning was a viable bottom. Uh, and not breaking that high, just testing that high, but not closing above it would suggest that the uh, short side is more likely the uh, is more likely the trade, and you can expect a further uh, retracement. Um, let's see the retracement here. If I take a look at that using uh, my retracement uh, ruler, you know that would that would suggest uh, probably down around next level, maybe around. Maybe one thirty one fifty four or so. Looks like it has not even broken the point three eight two retracement, which is one thirty three ninety one out here. So, you know, does does that does that assist you at all? Uh, in... Yes, it does. I appreciate that uh, having the uh, uh, the TAS signal box parameters there as well. Uh, very helpful. I'm going to go into the weekend flat these after having booked gains on shorts this morning. So, uh, so thanks so much and. Um, uh, get well rested, and we'll look for a profitable week next week. Sounds great. Thanks so much for calling. You do the same, and enjoy the fireworks celebration in uh, Philly. That was John in Philly. We took a look at the 30-year Treasury, and we took a look at the uh, silver contract. Uh, right now, as we take a look at the markets out here, you've got the uh, Dow still above the 17,000 mark, 17,042. S&P's up uh, 6. Uh, let's take a look at some uh, equities out here. So we took a look at the SPIs, the Diamonds, the Qs, the IWM to get a feel for where they're headed to. In the first hour, we took a look at the uh, uh, we took a look at the futures contracts to take a look at what their price projections uh, are. Let's go take a look at some uh, equities here that are uh, moving either the upside or the downside. Let's take a look at Goldman Sachs. GS is the ticker symbol. It's up uh, about two dollars and sixty cents, up a dollar fifty six out here. And uh looks like I'm getting a little error message. Don't know why there. So that uh, that's always a beautiful thing. Let's see if I can get price line up here. We'll just switch over to a different chart. Looks like maybe Goldman Sachs does not want to eh, Goldman Sachs does not want to participate with me. Well, forget about it. No, let's go look at Goldman Sachs. Let's just do it a different way. Uh we always have I've got so many tools out here. Let's take a look at GS is the uh, ticker symbol. Let's go see what it's trading up into out here. So still in bullish mode. Uh, Goldman Sachs uh moved into uh bullish uh, mode out here. Really the uh, trading session bull sash here on May the uh, 21st confirming a uh, move higher out here uh this morning. Also looks like it wants to go take out or attempt to take out the swing point here from June 20th. So it's trading into that uh, swing point. Um, let me do this here. Let me put up this chart. We'll take a look at Goldman Sachs, and we'll take a look at the uh, volumes out here. That might be a little bit easier for us. GS, again, is the uh, ticker symbol. Uh, let's expand this out. So the uh, swing point is trying to uh, break and trade into is from June 20th. Volume out there was uh, pretty good, 4.6 million shares. So that was to the upside. That 4.6 million shares was moving into a uh, downdraft session. They only had 3.8. So Goldman Sachs looking uh, pretty bullish from this stock chart as well. Now today, with a shortened trading session, you really can't necessarily use the volumes today from a benchmark standpoint. But nonetheless, you've got volume here of 767,000 shares. Uh, if it can close above the uh, swing point high from June 20th at 171.08, there's no reason here to suggest that it does not want to uh, do that, at least from what I can take a look at on the uh, daily chart. In fact, if we take a look at Goldman Sachs, we can look at it, just a little trend line out here that it uh, broke through as well. So Goldman Sachs broke through a short-term trend. That's a trend coming off of the January 6th the high out here. The next uh, trend line that I'm using, the next touch point I'm using is March the 7th. Goldman Sachs broke above that trend line on June the 18th out here when it got up to 170.10. So it does look, if we take a look at retracements as well from that uh, trend line, January 6th swing point high down to the uh, low on the trading session of, oh, I've got to pull it. 
it down there. It's a low of uh, April the 11th. Uh, you'll see that it's also just right at about the point six one eight retracement level. So it's at a natural spot. It got to a natural spot where you'd see some folks uh, take profits, get off of the elevator out here. Uh, we have not seen anything significant uh, to the. Uh, we haven't seen anything significant to the downside. Just a higher volume swing point from June the 20th. So Goldman Sachs looks uh, pretty uh, good out there. Let's see here. Let's go take a look at to the downside. Uh, so we got uh, someone new in uh, in first place. The downside off uh, five dollars and eighty four cents. Uh, ticker symbols S N X S Cynix uh, uh, is the Cynix Corp is the uh, name. Looks like they were out with numbers posted revenues of fifty nine million versus thirty two million. Not too shabby there. And uh, I was in net income. Did I say revenues? I don't know, but that was net income revenues. I'll say at this time three point four billion versus two point five nine. So they must be guiding uh, lower out here. But let's go see what the stock chart is telling us. That is S. And X as the uh, ticker symbol. It's got volume. It's daily chart. It's got volume off of those highs out here. Interesting uh, stock chart for sure. A high volume high that took place on April the fourth. Let me pull this back just a bit further. We'll see what that was an all time high. It most certainly was. It says at some point in time. Uh, Barring this thing not totally falling apart, the price ought to be up there. Today's session, not exactly what you want to see. In fact, it is absolutely not what you want to see on a light trading session. Nonetheless, I'm going to take this back. Because this, this high has actually been tested. It didn't test the actual high of the trading session. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. And so today's, uh, today's activity could really set up a consolidation uh, pattern. So if we look at the trading session of April 4th, up with 1 million shares, a little over 1 million shares, makes a high, starts to back off, does it with light volume, pulls all the way back into the breakout session. A breakout session, when you take a look at an equity, really is going to be the session it broke from. I guess that makes sense, right? That was the April 3rd level. 265,000 shares there. Uh, you'd use the high or the low, doesn't matter, 6366 or 6180. Ideally, you use the uh, swing point, use a, uh, you use the uh, session that had the lightest volume, maybe a couple sessions earlier than that. Uh, nonetheless, this thing pulls back into that area with 240,000 shares versus 265. At April 3rd level. So still not too bad because the real benchmark happens to be 1 million shares out there. And so it stays there, forms a little bullish engulfing candle on May 9th, does the same thing here on May 16th, 180,000 shares on its pullback. And then it goes ahead and it breaks higher and it breaks higher and it moves all the way up into the swing point. Well, it actually tested that swing point from April the 4th. The low of that swing is $74, even Stephen. Remember your benchmark, 1 million shares. Well, as it tested that area, it did it on July the 1st. As the market was breaking topside, this didn't have enough energy. It only had 317,000 shares, and it closed below that. It rejected it, much like the IWM. Remember we were looking at the IWM earlier? I said we really need to watch that one like a hawk, the IWM and the Qs out there, because the IWM has not been able to take out its high-volume high swing point. It's tested the top of it. Which, by the way, is a better test than testing the low as this equity here, <coughs> excuse me, SNX, uh, has done. And it tested it twice, a little doji candle from yesterday, July 2nd, 526,000 shares. I'm fading fast. Good thing we're going into the last segment out here. And now today you've got volume off of the highs, 569,000 shares to the downside says to me this equity is going to probably pull all the way back down to that swing point area in the 59 or 60 dollar range <coughs> excuse me snx is the uh, ticker symbol out here right now we've got the uh, dow up 63 points s p up six uh, nasdaq composite up 16 gold back nine dollars and silver off 10 pennies we'll be right back folks Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? 
Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, this is the July 4th uh, celebration edition of the uh, Money Masters show out there. And how about this? Each of you that are listening in right now, how about one random act of kindness one random act of kindness just go do something for someone i don't care if it's buying them a coke or buying them a beer or whatever it is somebody that you don't know out there that would be a, a beautiful thing if each of you did that it'd make the world a better place let's go to oklahoma city to our man nick nick thanks for calling thanks for holding how you doing today just fine just fine Steve. Uh, happy fourth to you thank and you your station. 
Thank you. Thank you. Same to you. You wanted to take a look at uh, Molly Corp. Tell me what you're doing and how I can best assist you out here. Well, um, I think it's being punished unduly uh, oh. yesterday, and I was wondering if there is any way to check if it's true punishment or it was just, I don't know, that one article uh, published, I think, in Seeking Alpha okay. could alter the whole landscape and uh, make this company look more towards BK maybe even. Yeah, you know, it's trading at 242 right now. Have you? Are you in the trade? Are you looking to get in? Right. I uh, last night, uh, right at the close, I picked up some. Okay. Uh, but, uh, to get the feel and to keep my eye on it, it's a little bit coming up this morning. But yes. It, it probably is not representative. I think all the shorts and longs are probably somewhere on the sidelines. Yeah, you know this equity here. Well, you can't. You know, it's hard for me to figure. And I don't. I don't see the the short interest or anything like that. But you know how anyone could actually be short a two dollars stock? You'd have uh, to assume the that, interest uh, is about thirty six percent. Yeah, but even that, that doesn't even make any sense to me, right? Uh, yeah. You know, you have to. Right. In order to make two dollars, it's got to go out of business. Shoot, to to do that, just go go along one S and P contract. I mean, you could, you know, you've got a you've got a you've got a better better opportunity for making money, uh, you know, by plugging your nose and and. But anyway, to answer your question here, what you don't like certainly about yesterday was that uh, was that you had another uh, move lower with some volume out there. Now the low, Nick, was uh, two thirty one. It was tested. It was not actually tested here today. It got down to two thirty two. You're still trading inside the. Uh, candle out here uh you know you there there's nothing in here that suggests that this wants to move to higher price the better way to trade something like this because you're going to keep your eye on it or one way that i would suggest to you, you're already in the trade so just make sure you keep uh, your stop in place but another way to consider trading this is wait for a sign of strength Wait for some other uh, uh, shareholders to say, you know, enough is enough, I'm done, I'm going up. And then what you would do is you would buy that first retracement off of that sign of strength out there. And that, I think, would be the uh, best way to play uh, Molly Corp, you know, is that you would uh, you would just simply draft behind a bunch of more bulls out there because at this stage, um, you know, I just don't, I don't, I don't see them in place out here, and that's how. That if you're asking me how I would trade it, that's how I would trade it. I would keep my eye on it, and right. uh, and I would wait for a sign of strength, and then I would come into the equity out here. Um, and that's that's really the best advice that I can give give to you on this on this equity. All right, I won't take any more of your time. Have the best Fourth uh, of July. Thank you. Winter. And best of luck to you, best of luck to you in your trade on Molly Corp. That was Nick in Oklahoma City out there, folks. Uh, please have a, a safe, happy Fourth of July. One act of random kindness. That's all each of us need to do out there. That'll go a long way to making this place a better world out here. Have a great, have a safe holiday weekend. I look forward to seeing you Monday morning. Take care, folks. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com.
You're watching Tiger TV.